up coming, I'm taking over now. Bam Bam from Western Sydney, baby. S A F T A. Whoever, whatever. The UFC, the biggest MMA promotion in the world, where fighters face the most difficult challenges in the sport. After getting off to a good start in the UFC, Australian heavyweight Bam Bam Tai Tuavasa went on a three-fight losing streak, which got him on the verge of being cut from the UFC. Tuavasa is now a fan favorite. Las Vegas! We're sure you've all seen him doing shoeies after viciously knocking someone unconscious. At the time of this video, he is ranked number three in the heavyweight division, and we here at Athlete Central are here to discuss Tuavasa's journey from almost being cut to one of the top heavyweight contenders. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Early good form. Before starting his MMA career, Ty was still proving to be the most athletic member out of his 11 siblings. Since he played rugby in his teen years and eventually got signed on a professional contract, he quit the sport after developing a gambling addiction. But fortunately enough for us bloodthirsty MMA fans, he decided to try his hand at mixed martial arts. Tuavasa was also fighting in the amateur leagues during his rugby career and eventually started fighting professionally in July of 2012. In a short span of nine months, Tuavasa managed to amass a record of 4-0. All of his wins came in the first round with a TKO, so Ty was showing off his power early on in his regional career in Australia. One caveat to that though is the fact that all four of his opponents were making their MMA debuts as well, meaning Ty had never faced anyone with an ounce of professional MMA experience. Bam Bam then took a break from MMA for an unknown reason, with his next bout taking place almost two years later. His only combat sports activity during that time was a loss in a kickboxing bout, where he got KO'd in the second round. But he was still undefeated in MMA, so the regional hype around him was still there when he faced his first opponent that actually had some experience. Ty continued his first round knockout streak to earn him a shot at the Australian FC heavyweight title that he conquered from Brandon Sassoli in a measly 21 seconds after KOing him with a vicious elbow. His next win was a defense of the title against James McSweeney in a fight that got stopped by McSweeney's corner between rounds. This fight got the UFC matchmaker's attention and Tuavasa was signed to make his debut at the tail end of 2017 against 8-2 Rashad Coulter. Ty had a 7-0 record and the bookmakers put him as a minus 175 favorite in the bout. Tuavasa certainly made his debut with a bang, landing a flying knee in the first round to knock his opponent unconscious. Is this Jorge Masvidal or a 265 pound heavyweight? He has arrived in the UFC's heavyweight division. His next fight was against 9-3 Cyril Asker at UFC 221. And Tai Tuavasa absolutely demolished him in the first round, knocking him out with punches and elbows. This earned him the number 15 ranking after only two fights in the UFC. We get that the heavyweight division isn't exactly the deepest, but getting a number next to your name only two fights in is impressive regardless. His next fight at UFC 225 was the first real test, facing MMA legend and former heavyweight champion Andre Arlovsky. The level of competition really showed in that fight since Tuavasa's nine fight streak of first round knockouts was broken, but he still got a unanimous decision victory and passed a litmus test that many up and coming heavyweights fail. Losing streak. So there he was, a heavyweight prospect with an undefeated record of 10 and 0, ranked 11th in the biggest promotion of the world. The UFC decided to put him up against another legend, Junior Dos Santos. This was the first fight of his career that Ty was an underdog, and unfortunately for him, it was also the first fight that he had ever lost. JDS knocked him out in the second round of their main event, showing the world that he still got it and is a superior fighter to Tuavasa. The Aussie then took half a year off from fighting and came back in the summer of 2019, facing Blagoy Ivanov at UFC 238. Ty got rocked in the first and Blagoy landed a knockdown, definitely winning the first. Tuavasa then landed a good shot in the second, but Ivanov then neutralized him with his clinch game. The third round was also a heavyweight slugfest, but the underdog Ivanov got the better of the exchanges. Ty wasn't used to his opponents being so durable and suffered a second loss in a row via unanimous decision. For the winner, by unanimous decision, Blagoy 
fight bugger His next fight was in his homeland of Australia, where he took on Sergei Spivak in a bout where he was a massive minus 310 favorite. Surprisingly, Spivak dominated the fight, absorbing Ty's punches and out-wrestling him, the first time that had been done to him in his UFC career. Spivak secured an arm triangle choke in the second round and got a submission victory. Ty had now lost three fights in a row, one via KO, one via decision, and another one via submission. The changes. Tuavasa is not stupid, and he knows that a three-fight losing streak is not a good look for the UFC. In an interview with Ariel Hawani, he said that he knew he was fighting for his job in his UFC 254 bout against UFC veteran skyscraper Stefan Struve. Tuavasa got a sparring partner that mimicked the seven-foot Dutchman to be prepared for the bout. The preparations paid off, and in his post-fight interview, Ty said that he adopted a new style. He said that he was a hothead before and recklessly rushed into exchanges without thinking of the consequences. In the Strew fight, Ty was patient and waited for his openings before using those heavy hands of his to knock Struve out with one second left in the first round. When he was 10-0, he thought the training he was doing was enough, but that three-fight losing streak humbled him, and he realized that he still had a lot of work to do if he was going to compete amongst the elites of the heavyweight division. After the Struve fight, Tuavasa realized that he couldn't carry on training in Australia due to all the pandemic regulations. It was very difficult to move around the country and his training was suffering because of it. He wasn't preparing to his full potential. That is when Tuavasa decided to move to Dubai, the city he claimed saved his career because he was able to train properly and promptly accept the fights that the UFC would offer him without worrying about travel regulations. Ty made a huge sacrifice, leaving his family back in Australia in order to continue his fighting career to its fullest. It has paid off though, given the fact that he is currently the number three heavyweight on the planet. After the Strew fight, Ty faced Harry Hunsucker and made quick work of the American after knocking him out in the first round, adding the 11th first round knockout to his resume. The next fight was against the infamous Greg Hardy. Almost every single person on social media was dying for Ty to win this fight in brutal fashion, and Bam Bam certainly delivered. It only took him a minute to knock Hardy out, taking home a cool $75,000 bonus in the process and pleasing every single fan that was preying on Hardy's downfall. Tuavasa then faced a top 10 challenge when he was matched up against Augusto Sakai. The Aussie KO'd him in brutal fashion and proved to everyone for the first time in his career that he belongs in the heavyweight top 10. Big trouble. Oh my God. His last fight was against the black beast Derek Lewis, a fight that Ty actually agreed to when he was drunk. Safe to say he does not regret that decision. The two heavy hitters traded punches, but the changes in Ty's game showed because he was picking his shots right and not really rushing into anything. He got the vicious knockout in the second round after a big elbow connected with Lewis. The Houston native was already wobbled thanks to Ty's previous power shots, but the elbow shut the lights out completely. Ty's sacrifice and change in mentality have been crucial for him getting back on the right track. Had he not been humbled by those losses, he wouldn't have changed himself for the better and adopted a mentality that he can always improve as a fighter. And his sacrifice to go and train in Dubai has been a key part to his success. He was able to train and get new looks from different sparring partners, continue developing himself, and making sure there are plenty of shoeys left to come for the Aussie inside the octagon. That wraps up today's video on Ty Tuavasa's resurgence. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Let us know what videos you'd like to see in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe.